Besándote otra vez Quiero tener tu bebé Besarte el cuello, tocar tu peso Metarte el pelo y pasar la vida Sigo pensándote Hey guys, welcome back to another vlog. I'm really excited about this one because we're doing things a little bit differently. It's still a travel vlog, but we are solo traveling for the month. It's currently July 29th. I have just arrived in Tulum, Mexico, and it is hot as hell, but I'm happy to be here. I just had this urge to leave my environment, to try something new, and I've never done a real solo trip where it's just me. I don't know nobody, I don't speak the language, I'm in a foreign land. So we're gonna figure things out on my own. I'm working remotely while I'm here. So I'm still busy Monday to Friday, nine to five, um, and then I'm just gonna find little pockets of joy, you know, with my free time. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. So I just arrived at the Airbnb. It's very cute, it's super modern. It comes with everything you would need. There's ample storage space that comes with an iron, ironing board. There's even a safe, which is very handy. It comes with all the equipment. There's the plates, there's the pans, there's everything I could need to make this stay comfortable. There's even a nice wraparound infinity pool on the fourth floor with a little gym right next to it. Not many machines, but it'll do. I got this place for about 1600 Canadian dollars after all the Airbnb fees and the cleaning fees and all that fun stuff, which you could never find a place in Toronto, like a one bedroom, one bath situation in this current economy. So it really was cheaper to leave Toronto than to remain in the city. My first week in Tulum was all about getting myself situated and well equipped. First thing on the list was for me to buy a bike. I went out into the town. My taxi guy brought me to a place called Beach Bikes Tulum where they sell new and used bikes. Now, I 100% recommend buying a bike if you are going to be there for an extended period of time as renting can get really expensive. And when you leave, you can just sell the bike on Facebook Marketplace or the shop will buy it off of you for half price if it is still in good condition. Next on the list was going to get groceries. I went to this store called Shadrawi. It's basically like a big supermarket similar to a Walmart. They have everything. I spent about $164 because I was getting everything afresh. I got some toilet paper, cleaning products, spices, meats, cheeses, vegetables, everything to start me off. My Airbnb was located in a neighborhood called Aldea Zama, which is just outside of Tulum town and about 10 to 15 minutes away from the hotel beach zone. In my opinion, it's the perfect place to be located because there's literally everything around you. They have pharmacies, they have grocery stores that are stocked with produce, they have alcohol options, and also ATMs for you to access. Now, when it comes to dining, you are literally spoiled for choice. There are so many good options. However, I did find that the food was a little bit on the pricier side, so definitely not an everyday thing, but they did have deals going on, whether it was happy hour for drinks or tacos. So still much for you to choose from, and I mean, treat yourself. There are also many cool hotels for you to check out in the area. <laughs> There was no peace working from home, so I decided to check out some co-working spaces. One thing about the co-working spaces in Tulum, you do have to pay for a day pass in order to use the facilities. It usually ranges from about the equivalent of 20 to 30 Canadian dollars for the day, and that includes access to their Wi-Fi, water, tea, coffee, and a bowl of fruit if you're lucky. But ultimately, I still was working remotely from Mexico, so sometimes no desk needed. It's a place where you enjoy. And it's very Tulum style. Very Tulum style, I can see that. 
It's very nice. A lot of these hotels are actually underutilized during the day, so why not work in a cute space, have access to a pool, and take a nap on your lunch break? So a little update, I just got off the phone with Airbnb. I have been having issues with the construction. It's been really, really disruptive. So initially, before even going the Airbnb route, I messaged my host yesterday to be like, the construction noise is really bad. What are the, what are the solutions? They have 47 listings on um, Airbnb. So I was like, surely they're gonna try and make this a pleasant experience for me. They were like, oh no, we're so sorry about that. We completely understand. There's not much we can do. We disclosed the construction noise. So we took that into consideration and that's why the listing was cheaper. And I was like, let me go back to this listing and just double check just to make sure that they're not, cause I'm pretty sure I didn't see that. So I go back, surely enough, all it says is Tulum is still a rural area, so you may have issues with Wi-Fi, electricity, and water, which we have taken into account, things that we cannot control. Send them the screenshot, and I'm like, please let me know where it talks about construction. And then she just highlights the part where it says that these factors have been taken into consideration, and I'm like, yeah, literally, water, electricity, and Wi-Fi. I don't have any issue with any of those three things. She was like, all we can do for you is you can cancel the reservation, find somewhere else to stay, and if by chance somebody books this unit during the days that you had reserved, we will refund you. Like, what kind of option is that? Are you, are you kidding? Like, as a host, that's what you're telling me? If somebody books it, then I'll refund you? That is no guarantee. I cannot go on. I didn't bother responding. I was like, okay, you've told me what you have to tell me. It's not satisfactory, so I'm gonna go to the big dogs. So I messaged Airbnb today, I called them, and I was like, here's my situation. They asked for evidence. Best believe I had that evidence awaiting to be sent. And they were like, yeah, I mean, it qualifies. Here are your options. Moral of the whole story, when you are looking for Airbnbs, especially if it's a longer stay and you actually are working from home or there's gonna be elements of you having to work and you want a calm space, I would 110% make sure that you message the host before you pay anything and just ask them, will I be affected in any way, shape or form by the construction if it is not mentioned in the listing prior? Because this is just, that's absolutely absurd. <laughs> Black and Tulum. If you are unfamiliar with them, you can find them on Instagram. They're basically a company based out here in Tulum, Mexico, and they their whole mission is just to bring black people, whether you're a tourist, expat, digital nomad, whatever the case may be, based here to just create community. So they throw events, they have parties, they have welcome mixers like they're throwing tonight. They do a whole bunch of stuff and um, it's always really successful based on what I see on Instagram. So it's at Mystical Lounge. It starts at 10 p.m. and ends at 2 a.m., which for me personally, I should be sleeping by now. But when in Mexico, break the grandma cycle. My taxi should be here in about five minutes. I'll see you guys there.
Yes, here. Gracias. It actually felt really good, but when I was down there, it was like, why am I not out of the water yet? I'm like, dang, but it's nice. Oh my god, peace. It should be 10 though, right? Sorry, I gotta ask, do you know how to make it the Mexican way? Man, I would love to learn. Then you have to look everybody into the eye, otherwise you got seven years of bad sex. Hey, how are you doing? Oh my god, everyone hide. This is Mel. Woo! Mescalita! Baby! Oh, you went in so quickly! This was fun! It's time to go, but it is so nice out here. The water is so cool. It's so refreshing. We met some really amazing people as well. It was a really good day. I had a good day. So we are at Mystica today. We were supposed to go to the beach, but it's super gloomy and it was rainy. So we decided to come to this spot. They say it's an immersive spiritual experience, whatever that means. So we'll find out. We just finished Mystica going in. I didn't know what to expect, but coming out, I loved it. Really like listen and watch what he's saying, read everything. Yeah. Take your time. It took me like 20 minutes to read a flag, but I had to sit there and do it. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10. <laughs> 10, out of 10. <laughs> I am chilling at Tulum Beach today. I accessed the beach through one of the restaurants in the hotel zone. They don't have a minimum consumption per se, but they do have different requirements. So if you're chilling on one of the chairs like I am, you have to get a drink. But if you want one of the sun beds or the loungy beds, you have to order lunch at the restaurant. And they only take cash, which is kind of an inconvenience because the one day I'm not strapped is the one day I come to a place where they only accept cash. They take American dollars, they take pounds, they take euros as well. If you do want to pay with a different currency, the beach is really nice though, um, there's no sargazzo, you can see that they've cleaned it up and they've left it in piles scattered along the beach so you can enjoy the nice blue waters sargazzo free which is a real treat during this period in Tulum during the season. So yeah, I'm just gonna chill here for a bit, read a book, enjoy the water, catch some rays and probably won't stay here all day and probably go get some food and go back home really because tomorrow is another work day. The beach is also full of people selling you all types of things. Some lady just tried to sell me some weed brownies. People are selling jewelry. They're selling dresses. My name is Monica Alvarez mm -hmm. and I make it here in Tulum. Nice. The fabric is cotton. You can feel. It's soft. Yeah, it's nice. And I am wearing, but I am wearing the jumpsuit. Mm -hmm. I have dresses too. I respect the hustle, but I don't know, it's kind of annoying having to say no gracias every five seconds because someone's coming up to you offering you something. Either way, lovely, lovely beach. That's good. It's like this is your house, it's like right here. It's giving Malibu. You open up your French doors. And you're just like, just right? Just we are at Selena in the hotel zone. I'm not sure we know where to go, but this way? Okay, thank you. It is really hot today. The sun is beating, it's doing its thing. Hopefully we have access to the beach. Get some drinks. Tuyo bajo la palma, con todo y eso, calienta mi alma. Tu me está bronceando por dentro, mi sol, mi mar, mi cielo, mi viento. Atento a lo que tú a mí me causa. Pasa el tiempo y un beso lo pausa, sabiendo que no va a terminar. Por eso te quiero llevar a ver vista el mar. Mirale el sol y ver llegar 
otro verano más Okay, I'm running late. It's 4.50. He's already here. Punctual. Nice. Yeah, I'm assuming that's him. Yeah. Oh. They prefer ceviche on the boat, and then we just get a little break out in calm, shallow waters. This is what I can handle. Whatever that was, was too ferocious for me. By the time I even got, we got to the sharks, I was so seasick. I did one dive, it was great. The sightings were amazing. Saw the, saw the whale sharks, beautiful, majestic, very docile. And by the time I got back on the boat, I was just tapped out. I, oh, I had a headache, my head was spinning. I felt like when I was gonna vomit. It was, it was no. I think <laughs> we are on the boat on ferocious waters for way too long, um, and by the time you get there, it just kind of sours the, the, the experience because you're too sick to even want to get back in the water. Someone else on board, he was full on vomiting. Like he only did one dive as well, as same same as me. And then for the rest of the way, he was just vomiting, vomiting, vomiting. I didn't vomit because I don't like to vomit. I will suppress it as much as I can, but. He was full on just not feeling well. And like, sir, I get you. I totally get you because it's a lot. It's a lot. I think ceviche is ready, so we're gonna hop back on. I've never even had ceviche, to be honest. Raw fish, I'm not really a fan, but huh, it's the only option. There's so much to explore in Mexico and the best way to do that is to rent a vehicle. I heard so many horror stories about car rental companies specifically in Tulum, but I think I may have found the spot for us. America Car Rental, if you are ever in Tulum or in Cancun, they have it at the, at the Cancun airport as well. Service, 10 out of 10. The guy was so friendly, we had great conversation. He explained everything to me very clearly. It, nothing felt scammy. So I decided to just pay for the full coverage um, insurance wise because I just didn't want any problems. The Mexican roads are a little bit wonky. Even though it was, it was double the price, if I were to just opt for the basic insurance, I think sometimes having peace of mind is just far greater than a monetary amount so for three days of having the rental so what are we friday to monday friday saturday sunday but that's actually four days about four days i paid i think it was like just under 300 canadian dollars which is not bad and that's with full coverage so i'm not even mad we head off just getting some really local good. tacos from this woman that has a cart it smells good So I got some minced pork tacos and then I got chicken tacos so they put beans at the bottom mm, 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 my favorite and then they layer it with rice um, the protein and then there's some kind of cabbage slaw on there and poquito picante a little bit of spice on there and of course horchata 
that minced pork wow we have just arrived at the cenote suitan there is no tour bus yet so we're gonna rush and go and get down there before it gets so crowded so for those of you that don't know what a cenote is, it's basically a natural pit or a sinkhole that exposes groundwater, which is as a result of the limestone rock having eroded over time. There are literally thousands of cenotes across Mexico, and this specific cenote is meant to be one of the most Instagrammable ones. However, I clearly went during the wrong season because it was very murky down there. Oh, okay, I think I see what- oh, Did we pass okay. it? No, 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 we go straight down and then- Take a left? Yes. Okay. I see what he's talking about. It's, it's kind of confusing. It is. Wow, look at this road that we have to go down to access the parking. So we finished at um, Cenote Suitan, very gorgeous. Water was a little bit murky though, I think it's not the season um, where you get the crystal clear waters and you know, the water um, passes the what's it called the platform mm. still a good experience though now we have driven down to Chichen Itza it was about a 50 minute drive from um, the cenote so we're about to do a tour it's nine hundred dollars sorry it's 900 Mexican pesos okay, so we've just done a little quick change um, in the car behind the car around the car and we're gonna get out we're gonna go Pay for the tour. We're gonna get some lunch. So the tour comes with what lunch? Mm -hmm. It comes with um, entrance tickets. Entrance tickets and a shuttle. And a shuttle. So there's no. It's not a guided tour. If you want a guided tour, I think it's a hundred numbers. A thousand three hundred pesos. Like we pick an appetizer, a main, and dish, and a dessert. Mm -hmm. And oh, dessert. That's okay. Correct. Awesome. Only drink, not included. Okay. And So, um, I don't think we chose the best day to go to Chichen Itza because it's raining, it's humid as ever. Y'all see this? Y'all see my face right now? But the food was really good. Like, I wasn't expecting it to be that nice, but it felt very local, it felt very fresh. Um, the only thing I didn't like was the flan. Flan? Flan? <laughs> We have made it to Chichen Itza, one of the seven wonders of the world. It's very gorgeous. So they make you get in, you pay for your ticket, and then they have just showers right on the other side of the ticket office. And then we walk down this path. He told me it's about a three minute walk and then we get there. It's kind of rocky. Maybe don't bring flip-flops. They keep coming off. They keep coming off. The water is so blue. There are like no people here. There's about 12 people maybe. I thought that me not coming at 9 a.m. sharp on a Sunday when they opened would mean that the place would be incredibly full. But there are probably like 12 people here. It's so serene. The water is so blue. The weather, the sun is out. It's not gloomy. It's not too gloomy. It's not too hot either. <sighs> what a life. So it started raining. Um, a lot of people are coming out of the water. I came out because I was trying to get some content with the tripod in my phone. And uh, I was like away in the deep trying to get back to my phone before it got too wet. I don't have the protective case on it. So I'm just gonna retreat here for a little bit until it subsides because one thing about Tulum, it's gonna rain pretty hard and then it will stop and the sun will come right out shining. So now they have a little stand over there where they sell coconut and um, I might just go grab one. Fun fact, I am not a fan of coconut or coconut water in the slightest. But in Mexico, I was told they have a snack where they basically eat the meat of the coconut with some spices added on top. And I really wanted to try it, but they made me drink the water first and I just could not do it. So I ended up pouring it out. Some of y'all are going to hate me, but I just could not drink that for the life of me. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. See? Yeah. What's this? Uh, it's okay. Let me try it. I'll try it. 
Spicy? Uh, picante? No. Okay. <laughs> Okay, I poured the coconut water out because I could not do it. So I'm just gonna try the shavings with some tagine sauce and something called Miguelito. So we're just gonna try it. I'm sure I like it. <laughs> Mm -mm. Humbly, that is not for me. If you're in Mexico, I would definitely recommend you trying it. You might like it if you like coconut, you like spices, maybe it's for you. For me, might have to dump this one out too. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. They have this platform that you can go up and get a better view of the lagoon. Look. How gorgeous this is. Wow, wow, wow. Absolutely stunning. Oh my gosh. Uh, did I not just fall down the stairs? And not just like one or two steps, halfway down. And it's not even like I was holding anything. I was being really careful. I was holding the railing. Everything was in my bag, nothing in my hands because it started raining really heavily. And I'm like, I'm not about to fall today, but I fell. When I tell you, not a single person, not one person got up to be like, hey, are you okay? Or what was that big? Cause it was a huge thump. Like my, I have a pretty hefty bag. The bag was doing all over the place. My whole left side, when I tell you my butt is throbbing like crazy right now. the bruise that I'm going to wake up to. Like, I think I'm actually just in shock about it right now because it actually really hurts. But no, I think my right foot, um, like my, I was wearing flip-flops, wrong shoes, wrong shoes, just slipped on the stair. It was like sort of falling diagonally. So my left side got the brunt of the fall. So by the time I got to the bottom of the staircase, like I couldn't even get up. I couldn't even shift to one side. And then I'm like, Cass, you're not gonna cry. You're not gonna cry. You're not gonna cry. I look down, my toe is bleeding. I have no scrapes or anything like that. Honestly, thank God. But I'm very unimpressed. So this is how I'm recovering. I have everything in the freezer. I literally have the whole freezer in my pants right now. <sighs> Just need to ice the sore area. We are at Palmas Central. It's hot as heck, as usual. Sweating uncontrollably, also as usual. But we got a few things to try. I didn't even explain what Palma Central is. It's basically um, a community of food trucks here in Tulum. There are many different um, trucks stationed around, and then there's a whole area, I don't know if you guys can see, that's focused where salsa dancing happens on Tuesdays um, that we are gonna attend later. But first, we're just trying a few different spots. I got falafels from a place called Todo Pita. He told me he couldn't share the secret, but whatever it is, it's beautiful. Mm. We also got a cheeseburger empanada. Yeah. That's tasty, Courtney. Cheese! I need to five. One. Side by side, open close. One, two, three. And that's a wrap. I had such a unique experience in Mexico. I'm so glad I did it. And hey, this is your reminder. Take that trip with or without them. Thank you so much for watching.